Hello, everybody, all over the world. Hello, and welcome to High GPS number 151, Dead Ringer Post Nerf. Ah, yes, I think it's the third nerf the Dead Ringer's gotten, like clear nerf or fix. It's gotten bad before. When it first came out, it was fucking broken as shit, okay? So, uh, this is kind of a very retro back. Uh, exactly 150 50 episodes ago. I did my very first episode, and it was dealing with those pesky spies. Yes, it was my first episode ever. I had no idea what I was doing. It was fucking long as a year. But it was showcasing how you deal with spies. Mainly Dead Ringer, because that's pretty hard for newer players. Um, and I've gotten this question, like, asked from time to time. Like, why isn't more people watching you? Why don't you have more subs? Why don't you have more views? Um... I'm kind of like the elementary school teacher of Team Fortress 2, like, I just teach you the very basics, and then you just go and, and learn on your own and never deal with me again. I just I just get you in to the Team Fortress circle, so you don't have to, like, spend a year learning the stuff the hard way, when you can just be like, oh yeah, this is how you deal with that. So, that's, like, kind of the idea, so when people have watched what they want, like, this uh, YouTube page is meant as an archive to cover, like, that's why we covered and tried to cover all the items, so if you're like, yeah, I wonder if this item's any good, and you're searching it on YouTube, because YouTube's, like, the second most used search tool on the internet, and then you find me, and then you watch it, and then you're like, yeah, I know, and stuff like that, so that's, like, the idea uh, behind this show. Yes. So, uh, before we start, uh... Ah, fuck it, I'll say that story for another time. Let's, uh, look at Dead Ringer. Uh, Dead Ringer is probably the hardest thing to grasp for new players, especially if you're coming from other games. Because the Dead Ringer, uh, in case you've, you're watching this video and you've never played Team Fortress 2 before and you're planning to play it or you've you watched it, uh, Dead Ringer works like this. You, you see the little watch down the corner here? At the bottom here? Yeah, down there, that's the Dead Ringer. When you hold it up, which you're going to see pretty pretty soon. Uh, nothing happens. You can't shoot while you're holding it up. But if somebody shoots you, you become invisible. So we're just waiting for the gates to open. Just waiting and just waiting. Da -na 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 -na. We're just holding it up like this. Um, uh, that's the only way we can cloak as a spy. But to the enemy, uh, it looks like we have uh, faked our death. So I, I heard a spy. I thought it was a spy that can't see him. We can see because we got the outlines, courtesy of Blue, a guy who's really talented, and he's working within the Team Fortress 2 uh, competitive community, s s giving us various tools for casting. He's a super awesome guy. If you meet him or see him, just tell him he's an awesome guy because he really makes uh, the work for us uh, really well, uh, m uh, much easier, if anything. So you see the spy still here. We uh, don't know where he is. Check the top of dispensers for spies. He is not using the Dead Ringer. Probably Cloak and Dagger. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Pretty hard to deal with unless you know how to deal with it. So, we're gonna watch, like, the way it's gonna start. We're gonna start at a high note, and then we're just gonna go down, like, a, a fucking landslide and just fucking crash and burn at the end. So, we're gonna start with the best and end with the worst. Uh, kind, kind of like that. It's gonna be most of the worst, pretty much. So, uh... You can't stab while it's up, and you hold it up like this, and ah, yes, we are invincible! Invisible. And that's the uh, dead ringered body of ourself, and the enemy gets the kill feed. We live, and we have damage reduction. And uh, we run, and we pick up uh, the ammo crate, which you can see spawns on these things. Either health pack or ammo pack spawns on these locations. Which is good. You should look out for those. To refill the cloak meter, because I can't cloak unless the cloak meter is full. And when you're in the cloak, you have reduced damage. But what they changed is that whenever you get shot, your cloak uh, runs out faster, as well as you take uh, damage. And it's also pretty loud. It makes a loud noise. And uh, this is the kind of weapon that if you play against players who have absolutely no idea of the game, this weapon is like the most Imba broken thing ever. You will never, ever die. They don't know what the sound is. But experienced players, like, if you play against, like, really experienced players, we're gonna be seeing that in later replays. If you play against them, you, like, you literally can't do nothing. Like, they see you, and they shoot you, and they immediately realize that you're a dead ringer. And then they just run to where you're gonna uncloak, because they know the map, they know where you're gonna uncloak, and then they just kill you. Sometimes they even don't bother with that, they just run into you and follow you around. 
So once again we fake our death, and you can see this is the cloak meter, usually you have it on the HUD, but this is a replay system so you can't really see. And this is the sound it makes. Yes, so listen for that sound and turn around. And we're gonna be seeing a heavy utilizing turning around and just absolutely destroying us. That's pretty much it. So a spy has a variety of different cloaks, watches that you can turn invisible with. Uh, the standard one runs out. You can just cloak at any time. Just right click and you you cloak. Uh, or you can use the cloak and dagger, which is it recharges when you're not standing when you're standing still. But unlike the regular cloak, it doesn't refill when you pick up ammo. And then you have the dead ringer, which is this thing we're looking at today. Those are like the three options you have. So that went pretty okay. Since it was payload on defense, it's not like I wouldn't recommend running Dead Ringer on defense because you know it's it's better on offense and stuff like that. Pyro puts us on fire, pushes in the corner, and we fucking just die just instantly. So Pyros still pretty fucking good against spies, regardless of cloak and weapons. Pyros are good. Yes. Just to showcase that, that you can die, like, really fast if you're not careful or if you're really unlucky. So, I always have to change the outlines. And also remember, as a spy, you do have a revolver. So try and shoot your targets like this. Boosh. Kill. You do damage. It helps. You can also see their health. So if they're low, you can kill them pretty easily. So as a spy, like, your job is to kill targets, you are not very versatile and you uh, rely on running into the enemy's backs and stabbing them. And sometimes when they're out of range, I just like to use their revolver. You can use whatever firearm you like and just shoot them instead if the, like, the distance is too too great. You don't necessarily need to stab them all the time. And hey, drop stab. There we go. Uh, very uh, good technique. You just drop down on them or sometimes you can just run around the pyro and just shoot them and ah we are on fire as you can see when we're decloaking like this we have a lot of fire and yeah we got to uncloak here and oh shit a spy we're just gonna we're just gonna just just gonna die okay he's just gonna decloak and then we're gonna die because with the dead ringer like if you see a spy who's using the dead ringer and he uncloaks he goes like and you see him if you kill him, you can bet your ass he's gonna be fucking dead, alright? He's just gonna fucking die because that thing doesn't work anywhere because he's out of cloak. Uh, but sometimes it can be kind of hard to tell because spies can, like, shoot and pretend that they're, like, committing. And then they just fake their death and then they have, like, a believable death. Um, is what they can do. So here we have a pyro who decides to push us out instead of just burning us, which is very considerate of him. Giving us a chance. Uh, hanging around payload carts when you're on blue team attacking. Uh, being on blue is a lot easier with the dead ringer. Oh! Okay, we're like in the middle. There's like. He's gonna see us. Like, absolutely. He's gonna see us. Or not. He just turned around. And we run into a scout and. Uh, we, we're currently not cloaked, by the way. There comes the medic! Yeah, just. Uh. Okay. Okay, so this is us. Let's see if I can get an actual visual here, because this is like currently a bug with the replay system that um, you can't see your own model. Let's see, can I? God damn it! All right, so like this, like this, like this, and this, and hopefully. Ah, yes. Okay, so we're fully visible now. Uh, oh, sh okay. He saw us. So we're just gonna go up here. And remember, you can only one-shot players from the back, like from the front. You can't. Can't, unless there's, like, lag, face stab. Let's just see what happens here. Oh, here comes the medic. And he is doing the mistake a lot of players do, like... I see a spy. He decloaked, which means if I kill him, he will absolutely be dead. Which means if I just kill him, I will be glorious and I will be really good. So I'm just going to melee him, because that's cool. And, uh... Whenever a spy is running away from you with and not shooting you, and he's running up a cliff, uh. 
can you can you see this? Okay, I'll make I'm, I'll make it clear, right? Outline. Okay, stair step attempt incoming is what that means. Okay, just keep that in mind. If you're chasing a spy and he's not shooting you and he's running up a hill, he's gonna fucking try and jump over you and stab you in the ass. Okay, that's what he's gonna try to do. So here's what happens. Let's slow it down. Take a look at this. Comes a medic. And I just uh, jump and stab him in the side and the back slash face and he dies and feels pretty fucking stupid, alright? If he just used the if he had just stopped here and started firing the syringes, I, I would have died, but no problem. I have really low health as well, so that's unfortunate. And because of this, the medic has allowed us to uh, to uh, refill our cloak, but that's not the case entirely because we like we we used our cloak, we uncloaked, and it takes a while for this thing to recharge. But here's the thing. Like, really good spies will utilize every aspect of their surrounding as they can. So if there's dropped ammo, you can bet your ass the spy is going to pick one. And I did that here. Because uh, you can see down here is the drop uber saw from the medic. And, the, like, whenever you kill people, like, they drop their weapons, you can pick them up. Very useful for spies if you experience you run out of cloak a lot. Try to pick up the weapon from the people you're killing. Because he will refill your cloak. So here's what happens, right? Like, here's us. And we, we still haven't had a full uh, charge yet. It's currently like a bug. But I remember it's an uber saw there. So run back, pick it up, and that allows us to fake our death once again. And everybody thinks we're dead because we have literally just uncloaked a few minutes ago. And that is really hard. Like, if a spy runs by like a sentry nest with a lot of blown up buildings, that's a lot of cloak refill for the spy. And then we're just going to uncloak back here, become visible once again. And we're just going to run back. And of course, we know the map. And you can see these outlines once again are where ammo and health respawn. And, um, yeah, then we're just back where we want to be. We want to be behind enemy lines, and thanks to these uh, outlines, we can now see players are coming. So what I, I'm going to do, I'm going to run around and stab him, and the medic's going to follow us, and we fire a couple of shots. They think we're dead, but actually we're using the dead ringer. Haha. -ha. And um, usually if a spy is constantly running dead ringer, he can be a bit more... Predictable! Uh, than if he's running regular cloak, because Dead Ringer does limit your options a lot. But uh, once you start hearing screams, just turn around and be a badass like this one. Okay. Okay, good. That's like effective usage and timing, okay? Use your surrounding pickup as much metal as you can. Be convincing. Because one thing is like a lot of, like, what a lot of spies do is that they run with the Dead Ringer out like when they're just running around right? You always hold it up, but like, if the enemy knows you're kind of like a fresh spawn and you haven't taken any damage and they just shoot you like from afar and does like six damage and you die, they know you're faking it. So keep that in mind as well when you're using this. And that's also kind of a dead giveaway. Like if a player dies instantly and he doesn't look hurt, it's most likely a dead ringer. And keep in mind, spies can disguise as their own team as well, which is very common for dead ringers like to disguise as a pyro or a sniper and uh, stuff like that. So we're just gonna look at what happens when you play against really competent players, right? When they're really good, they really know what's going on. They have good game sense. So right now we're gonna try and uh, stab him. Oh, okay, so he knows that we are uh, faking it, hopefully. And we're just gonna go and, okay. So we are now in a situation that is not very good, right? So we're just gonna go and try and stab this heavy here. Uh, but he's on the ledge and if th th this fails, we die, right? So we're just gonna go and he turns around and just can't, and we die. In that situation, it would have been better to just use the revolver and not go for uh, a stab attempt at all. Uh, so that's when you play with more competent players when they're like not completely tunnel vision. They kind of turn around because after a while, if you after you've been stabbed like a million times, you start to get to feel this timings of when spies can come and get you. So you usually turn around at those key moments. It's usually when you're really busy with something, like when some a lot of shit's going down. Uh, that you do that, and uh, I'm gonna run with, uh, oh, Pyro, oh, game crashed.
And we're back! Woo! Ah, okay, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Alright, so we were just... Oh, yeah, this one is long. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Okay, so we were here. All right, we were here somewhere. Okay. Uh, this is just called Pyro Still Fuck You Up, okay? So... At 18... Pyro puts us on fire. We try to, f to fake it, and we die. So at 20, we're fucking dead. So that's like two seconds, and we're dead. And that's with using the Dead Ringer and using the um, the reduced damage. But keep in mind, every damage you take while using the Dead Ringer will empty your cloak. So if like if there's a heavy who shoots at you, you run out really quickly. And if there's a pyro, you just run it like nearly immediately, and you just you just fucking die, right? You just fucking die. So after this nerf. Dead Ringer is no longer a get out of everything trouble free card. It is like it used to be, but not anymore. Not to the same degree. And also, it's your cloak. Your cloak just burns up. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I remember the first time I encountered the Dead Ringer in the game. Like the like the very first time like I played I I played Team Fortress 2 when it came out like in 2007, but it didn't have any unlocks and the like it was a good game but like it felt kind of empty it, like didn't feel like it had any depth and then I returned to it when they started doing the updates and they started adding their items, and I really liked it and then I I remember playing Spy a lot before the Dead Ringer came out and I remember when I got the Dead Ringer I just had no fucking idea how to use it like it was overpowered as shit back then and it was like. But it was like a different cloak, and like nobody had any idea how to use it because like brand new, new meta game, like how. So I would like treat it like the regular cloak, and I would never understand why it like didn't work. And then I remember I went to YouTube, and I saw this video, like this short tutorial, and it was like how to use it. And I'm like, oh, that's how you use it. Oh. And then I did fucking awesome with it ever since. <laughs> So every drop down, and this is kind of bad, so... Like, it, this is what I mean. If there are competent players, like this scout, he is very much aware of my distance of running, and scouts always run faster, so if you try to get away, you can't. Because when you eventually decloak, he just throws milk at you and tries to kill you. Like, I'm surviving a, long, a lot of time here, and I actually picked up a health pack. But scouts, competent scouts, can shut down... Spies almost as well as Pyros can. Like, especially Dead Ringer. I think Scouts are really good against Dead Ringers, like, other than the Pyro. Because if you as a, if the Scout knows... Like, they know how long you have to decloak, and they usually think you're gonna run to the closest ammo pack, because that's the best choice, because you don't want to decloak, like, in the open. And they'll just run to the ammo pack and just fucking wait for you there, and when you decloak, they fucking kill your ass. Um, so we're gonna try and do that, and I'm currently playing on a, a pub server here, and everybody on the blue team, they're like really good players, like from competitive scenes. And Greg is really good, is really good, Colin Chris really good, Kisaka is really good, this guy's good, I think this guy's good as well, don't know who these guys are. But like, the top six are like, good players, right? They, like if you stab their friend, they will immediately turn around and, and stuff like that, like, they're very much game aware, and like, the more game sense your opponents have, the less useful the Dead Ringer will be. Like, if you play against players who have absolutely no idea how to play the game, of course it's gonna kick ass. It's like... It's like in Street Fighter, you know, if your friend doesn't know how to block, uh, you're gonna fucking win if you just do down and heavy kick. every Like, every time, you're just gonna win because he won't know how to block it. But if you play against a pro and you try that, like, he, you do that once and he counters and you just fucking die. It's kind of like the same thing here. So, like, I don't really have a lot of openings. Scouts are fast, hard to hit, and they just... They don't go as close as, like, a lot of uh, newer players do. They, like, stay in the zone where, like, if you go towards them, you die, and if you try to run away, they'll just follow you. And, um... Yeah, and that, once again, we use the Dead Ringer. Very obvious, they have... They know for sure that we're using Dead Ringer, and I decloak right next to a pyro. And I try to do for fancy corner stab, Medic comes in, hits me with Uber Zion, gets 25% free Uber for his team. So I actually sabotaged a bit there, which was really against my intention. But you see, like, in a situation like that, using the Dead Ringer really limits your ability to cloak, because now we're apparently in a horror movie. Jesus, this camera is skewed. And, um... Yeah. 
because your entire cloak inking ability relies on the enemies shooting you. And if they don't shoot you, and they just look at you from a distance, it's just so stupid. It's like, yeah, we know you're a spy. Do something. Like, I dare you. If, if you do anything, we will kill you. Except for stand exactly where you are. So here we're using the dead ringer trying to get around, of course. Uncle, oh, getting in the extra cloak. That sound is loud. But uh, thankfully, thanks to the power of medics not checking their backs properly, and the uh, random crits, which we will see in just a minute. Our control point is being captured. So like, oh yeah, I got no clearing, using the dead ringer once again. Just gonna go down here. And oh my god, that's a scout! Ha ha! You're no match for mine. Random crits! Hey -o. That's why random crits are fair. And we're gonna go on a point and try and cap it. Oh no, it's, it's, yeah, it's on our team. Yay! We did it. When I was collecting these replays, I absolutely got my ass handed to me for like two hours straight. Like, I literally couldn't do anything. You're like, you see me die like really easily right now? This is the highlights, okay? The highlights of the moments where, like, I didn't get absolutely brutally murdered by these guys, okay? So... Like, if I had the option, like, if I wasn't restricted to only use the Dead Ringer... Uh, I would have definitely switched to, like, Cloak and Dagger or uh, the uh, regular uh, standard Invisi-Watch because... M like I stated earlier, my cloaking ability depend like, relies on the enemies shooting me and then believing I'm dead. And if they shoot me and they know I'm not dead, because I'm a terrible faker like this, like running up like with this, they're gonna shoot me once and once again they threw milk at me and there's two of them and I was like, okay, I can just uncloak and just fucking die. And I tried to run to the pyro and not enough. Well, I'm not, now the pyro gets taken out too because these guys are fucking good, alright? They're just so good. But they're not good against sentries, they're mini sentries. So, now we're kinda on the tangent of just shit that will fuck you up as a dead ringer man. Uh, things to look out for, things to be careful about. Let's see if we can just uh, speed it up and get to middle really faster. Uh, using Dead Ringer. And we're using the revolver because, uh, because yeah. It's good. Uh, a lot of players in the chat, uh, some people in the chat are saying, like, you should use friendly disguise. Yeah, but that after you do that, like, ten times in a row, is going to be pretty predictable as well, so you might as well just switch around. The um, places where the Dead Ringer is really good is where there's a big choke. Mainly older maps. Like uh, I think the best map to use the Dead Ringer on would be to like like Dust Bowl or Gold Rush or something. Maps uh, attack defend maps that doesn't have a lot of chokes. That well, that has a lot of chokes. But maps like this, like five control points, usually have a lot of flanks and not a lot of ammo re uh, re things. And sometimes SMG snipers just because. Pay attention to what this guy is doing, alright? This is, I, th I forgot, I think it's Kisakala or somebody. It's not really important. But just watch what he does compared to, like, what other players would have done. Most players, when they see a spy, they're like, I'm gonna melee that motherfucker. But that's not a good idea. What did I click? Okay. That's usually not a very good idea. Because a lot of spies, like, I I'm, not, I'm not a main spy, but some spies, you've probably seen the trick stabs, the side stab, the Matador stab, the under stab, the face stab, the, all, all of these stabs that they do and like because of lag compensation and stuff like that they can really play that to that their advantage but uh just look oh uh, i don't know who this is i should probably give him credit this is yeah this is dark either darkseo or robin poop darkseo is norwegian as well i think and he's he's good too so watch what he does like he hears me like decloak behind this rock and i'm trying to chase him and then he just pulls up the smg and keeps it his distance and then just fucking kills me that's all I wrote. So let's look at a moment where I have a bit more success because I've really just emphasized on like what can shut you down. So let's look at something that when it when it when it works, right? When it when it's good. So first we're just gonna stand and stare blankly into space while we talk to our hot girlfriend online. <laughs> Maybe it was my mother or something, I don't know. I was typing something, that's for, that's for sure. And, uh... Yeah, just still hanging out, you know. Like... <laughs> I 
I, I, I usually don't do this on my YouTube videos because I don't think telling my audience to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. I think you can do that on your own without me telling you to. But I remember seeing, uh, I think yesterday I saw a Shippy video, and like in the second sentence he was like, sure to like, favorite, and comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Alright, so we have a scout here. He, we can't really shoot him. He actually runs away because he's close to our spawn. And we're just hanging around here and shooting some stuff, and okay. If you want me to get a kill, like, comment, and subscribe. And, oh. <gasps> Alright, dude, this is like the first step. This guy, which is, I think, I think it's, no, 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 no. He, um, he saw me, but uh, I'm currently disguised as something, because, you know, that's how the replay works. So he doesn't think I'm a spy, thankfully. So, whoop. I uh, managed to fall down there. That was not intentional. But hey, I'm going to be able to grab my... Uh, need some more ammo and uh, stuff. I have full cloak as I'm holding it. Uh, got the stab, yes! And the pyro didn't hear us. Should really have been using the revolver on the pyro, but that pyro is... Uh, mm, yes! And as a soldier, he also doesn't check his back or listen for sounds. And uh, come on! Yes, getting him as well. And you can see that when the enemies are less aware of your presence and there's more shit going on and there's tighter areas and more chokes, the Dead Ringer does a lot better. Uh, especially with players that are, like, not, like, really good. But, like, anyway, like, players who are w worse than you, like, that you're better than them, will you, you will always beat them. Like, most of the time you will always do that because you're just better. Like, especially if they're clueless. So one thing like I don't enjoy is playing on like playing spy on a server with clueless people because like you've probably done this your like, or happened to yourself like one spy on the enemy team just keeps killing your team and you just fucking die and you die and you die and you keep dying and it doesn't stop and you just keeps killing you. you have no idea where he comes from. Somersault. Check your back. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to be playing on uh, Lakeside here, which is a King of the Hill map. Uh, not that Dead Ringer friendly, but we're going to try it anyway and see how it works. You see a sniper, and uh, one thing to note is that if you take fall damage and you have the Dead Ringer out, it triggers. So sometimes taking down the, the Dead Ringer watch and then falling, taking the damage and then going up is usually better. Uh, because sometimes it can be like an unnecessary trigger. So we have Medicare, just gonna stab him. Yeah, that's that's one kill, and we have a bunch of players on the point. Okay. Let's watch this in slow motion. Let's watch this in slow motion because this is painful. This is what like most of like the the spy pub videos are with players who are like this, okay? These are players who do not pay attention to the sound because believe it or not, Team Forest 2 gives away a lot of information just by sound. But you have to listen. So we're just gonna turn. Oh. So there's three. One, two, three. Hopefully, none of them are deaf. Because if they're deaf, it's like kind of like, fuck you. How dare you play with no arms? And it's one stab. Two stabs. Three stabs. And I get a random crit and I die. So uh, let's just go back a bit and watch it in real time and listen for the screams, right? Alert. The control point is being captured. All right, listen. On the first scream, you should have turned around and check your back, because when the players scream really loudly, it means they've been killed by a crit. So either they've been killed by a headshot, stabbed, or killed by a random hit scan critical, or flames. But then you would hear the fire, and you would hear the pyro, right? So that's kind of the thing to look at. Like, when you are dealing with spies, that's the thing to look out for. So that's all my replays. So now we're going to move on to the user-submitted replays. And here's the thing about user-submitted replays. We have Gozizan. We all know Gozizan. He's a hero. He submits a lot. And because he submits a lot of bad, he also submits a lot of bad. And But what, today we had a lot of other submitters. I think we had, like, a lot compared to usually. They submitted fewer replays, and they were all good. I didn't showcase all of them because some of them, the examples were better represented in my replays than in theirs. But it was still the same thing and it was still pretty good. If I didn't have my replays, I would have used those. 
So we're going to look at the first guy. I keep, I keep forgetting, noting the name of the person who does that, but uh, we will see with the fancy use of... Scene transitions! Go! So this is... Yeah, I think this is Turtle. Yeah, Kodak Turtle. He's the only spy on his team, and he's going to be using some... Like, he's going to be playing a lot better than I fucking have, okay? And he's going to be using very good tactics. He's going to be using a different loadout. But he is using the Dead Ringer. He's using the Ambassador. That's, like, the only difference, which is, like, headshot-oriented thing. And I really like this one. That's why I'm saving it. I said I said we would, like, start high and end low, right? But uh, we took a mid, like a nosedive in the middle, and now we're, like, going up and then going down again. It's kind of like we're doing, like, a like a mountain of skill. So um, he's going to be hanging around here, up with the Dead Ringer. And he's turning his back. That's very convincing, because you do want to, like, he's currently this guy's that. I don't fucking know. Something. And he's going to be running backwards. Very convincing for his team. And oh, this is very interesting. He had the opportunity to stab the demo. We had to lower his dead ringer, so he didn't. And that can also be like a factor of like pretending and acting. Like if you don't stab at an optimal, like potentially very optimal situation to stab somebody, it will be more convincing that you're not a spy. So, if there's, like, a guy right in front of you, you know, like, you can easily stab him, and then Dead Ringer your way out of it, easily. And then, like, five guys will see you. But the thing is, if you run behind them, and you don't stab him, and the other guy sees him, they're like, well, he didn't stab him, he's maybe one of us, he's probably on health. And then they don't think about it anymore, right? But that allows you to go behind enemy lines. Oh, yes, that's where the spy want to be. And, oh, a sniper with the razor back! How will we ever? Well, he, he hasn't seen us. Well, just... Make sure that one the boot's dead. All right, sap this shit, and then we're gonna be oh uh, god, there's an engineer. It's an engineer. Uh, try to headshot. Uh, getting shot by mini sentries. And are we bleeding? Yes, we're bleeding. And ah, yes, perfect uncloak spot. Grabbing that metal that I mentioned earlier, and using the dead ringer once again. And now, because usually most players think like, well, as when he decloaks, uh, he he is dead, and that's exactly what the engineer thinks. Probably didn't think like, well, there's a lot of metal here that he can just pick up and just instantly refill and use it again. Very smart play here by Mr. Turtle, man. Turtle. Was Kodak Turtle, yes. Very nice play. And then he's going to do a run of variation of the very famous... Uh, a very famous strategy of running into the enemy spawn and dying uh, without dying. So he's just going to stab the medic, zap that, and then he's going to run away. And uh, I'm just gonna uncloak, grab the ammo, because ammo refills your cloak. And there's nobody up here, so no reason not to do it. And then he sees a heavy, and he's like, whoa, ooh, it's a demo. And oh, we're gonna teleport. Hey, I'm just gonna stand on top of this. Engineering 101. Let's see. If we can find the engineer, that'd be great. Let's see. On the blue team, we have an engineer. This guy. Alright, so. Telefrag. That is when you go through the teleporter and you kill whoever is standing on it on the opposite team. So whenever your entrance gets zapped, don't do this. Because, uh... Kodak Turtle will... Like, I think the molecules, like, render inside you, so you just splat outwards. I think you should gib when you die from Telefrag. That would make some more sense. But that's a very good common spy strategy. Keep in mind you can take teleporters even if you're not disguised. Which is very useful. So, uh, getting the free engineer uh, kill as well. And now he sees a soldier and a scout surrounds him. And he didn't get away, but he did a lot of work. He did a lot of work. He did a lot of havoc, which was really good. Very, very good play. Very nice usage of the Dead Ringer. Very well implemented to his style. He was very much aware of where things were, because where is a good word. He was very aware of his situations and his surroundings, and he used that to his advantage to the most, like, used, picked up the metal, abused the teleporter, went to spawn, harassed, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be watching, uh, who's this? It's either... Let's see. Uh, it's Radical. It's 24. All right. This guy. So this is one of the maps where if you do run the standard watch, this is going to be very hard because this map is just one long choke. Like, like, a, like the choke starts here and it ends nowhere. Like, this is one choke, but like, but you're forgetting this way. Well, that way is intersectioned with this one, so it's 
He goes like... So it's still a choke. Uh, which makes running standard in Busywatch pretty hard. And I think this is like... Because of the early maps were designed like this, it like caused the Dead Ringer to be uh, created. Because in regular Team Fortress Classic, you know, the... I guess you can call it Team Fortress. That is like Team Fortress 2. First you have the, the Quake mod, which was like the original Team Fortress. And then you have Team Fortress Classic, which was the mod for Half-Life. And then you have uh, Team Fortress 2, which is actually the third. But it's two, anyway. Uh, in Team Fortress Classic, the spy had the ability to uh, fake in death like you would just pretend you die, and it's kind of like a derivation of that from Team Fortress Classic. And we're actually seeing that a lot with various unlocks, that uh, they take variations and adaptations from Team Fortress Classic, and they import them into Team Fortress 2. We also have Fortress Forever, that somebody's mentioning in the chat, that's like a mod. And I also like, I also like this bot killer knife, because he's going like, Hey, hey, I'm a knife, I'm a knife, and I'm gonna stab, I'm gonna stab, I'm a knife, I'm a knife, 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 stab. I'm gonna stab, because I'm a knife. <laughs> Using the Dead Ringer once again, and it's just kind of hanging around in this uh, general area. Not really doing all that much, but it's going to try again, and... Uh, with the nerf, this is a lot harder than it used to be, because with the pre-nerf you can just... Like, pre-nerf you didn't lose cloak when you took damage, so you had the same amount of cloak. Uh, the entire time. Stabbing a demo man. Of course, uh, Dust Bowl, if you want a top frag, play Demo Man on Dust Bowl on the red team. You will do surprisingly well. Just fire these bombs in the general direction of the opponents, and you will get tons of kills. You'll get MVP. He's hanging out still. Hasn't really done a lot much, but he hasn't left the area, and that's something that I, I like about his play. It's a bit more passive. A bit more defensive, but it makes sense because he's on the defensive side. Uh, so basically, he's just hanging out in like this box, right? Like right here. This box is where he hangs out the entire time. He just goes back and forth, and like you could go, uh, you could probably go towards the enemy spawn. You know, going this way. The enemy spawn is down here, but this like it's not as dead ringer friendly. Like you can decloak behind here, but you're kind of behind enemy lines, and uh, you, like you might miss the. The ammo pack, which you need to refill your dead ringer and be left a lot more vulnerable. So he's just kind of hanging out here, where his team has most of the jurisdiction in this general area. They have the most presence. And uh, you see, he, he catches fire, and then he just falls back behind his team. And I'm uh, gonna grab a health. Keep mine. Both health kits and you activating the dead ringer will put out your fire. But if you put out your fire while you're on fire, like as a pirate is burning you, you will catch on fire when you're on the dead ringer, and then. You Like, no, not like that. That's how you not get caught on fire. That's pretty good. And then grabbing health. Uh, map knowledge of where packs are is pretty crucial. Playing Dead Ringer Spy because you boost your effectiveness uh, as long as you pick up fallen weapons and stuff like that. So every single target that is killed, look for their weapon, reveal your cloak. It is very much uh, recommended. And then he's just gonna run into spawn and just uh, grab some shit there. Uh, this is back in business. All right. Back in business, gonna go this little hallway along with another spy. Gentlemen. Which is twice as stealthy. Well, the thing is, the more spies on your team, the less, uh, the, the more uh, predictable. predictable you are, and it's like there and he just dies to a sticky or a roller or something. Ugh, because it's. The only ones are good in chokes. So here we have uh, another example. I, have, I think this is Kodiak again. Where he is going to be playing on Harvest, the King of the Hill map. We haven't seen that today. I think this is uh, no. Who is this? He's on red team. No, I think it's the same guy. Actually, it's uh, uh, Radical. Yeah. In this replay, I will I will demonstrate that if you do not pay attention to screams, like players yelling really loudly and turning around, you're going to fucking die a lot. So one, two. Like, like, one thing is dying to the spy, you know, like, okay, I died, like, you know, that happens. One thing is, somebody in front of you gets stabbed, and you, you see them get stabbed, and then you just don't do anything. Maybe he's like, well, well, I guess life is over, might not, as well, not do nothing, you know? So let's see, okay, he's moving up here, and here we have the heavy and the sniper. Okay, so what does the sniper see? Not that guy, this guy. This guy, yeah. This is what he sees, right? He's in the scope. 
and then he gets st okay he looked away okay so that's maybe maybe excusable but not really and then he dies as well I think he would have died anyway because spies are generally pretty good against uh, snipers but like you could have made an effort um, you he might have gotten there lucky crit so that's one scream that soldier and the sniper doesn't pay any attention oh, another scream this soldier has heard two screams and then he dies as well so let's just go back and take a look at that from the soldier's perspective like I will go in that soldier's first person view we will only see what he does but I'm gonna turn up the volume I'm gonna turn up the volume so let's see where he is this guy. Alright. So this is him. Gibbous. Doesn't really matter. Our spy right. friend. It's over there. And wait, we're gonna go back uh, just a little bit more because uh, the scout's already been killed. Alright, this is where he is. Excellent. Alright, our control point is being captured. <laughs> First scream. Second scream. Third scream. But he was focused on something, but... You know, always listen for the screams. Especially when there's two in a row. Is, is what I, I, I want to I wanna focus on, because... You'd be surprised if you just turn around after every scream you heard how many spies you will see and how much less you will die. And there's some nice teamwork here with the scout and the spy. Spies will always try and get you when you're busy or occupied with something. So keep in mind that whenever, like, especially when you're heavy and you need to, like, be focused in one general direction. Like, if you keep firing that direction long enough, a spy is eventually going to sneak up behind you and just murder you. And no, it's not the Pyro's job to protect you. The Pyro's job is to kill the spy if he sees the spy. But if he doesn't see the spy and you die, it's your fault. It's always your fault for dying. No one else. Uh, but, um... As for checking your back, you don't have to check your back until you get stabbed. That's kind of like the um, rule that I live under. Because I'm not paranoid unless I have to. So I'm just going to go around and not really check my back. But until I die by a backstab, I will be a lot more careful. Uh, so that's that's very good. Uh, and once again, another stab. Soldier doesn't turn around. We've seen that a lot. And then he turns around and he sees him, but, uh, you know, Deadringer and survives. That's a little cute little trick you can do if you use the Deadringer and you run up to the soldier's face and he just shoots. He will actually kill himself and you will survive. It's kind of cool. Like, hug the soldier. Uh... Uh, it works for Demo Man when he's using the grenade launcher and locking load as well. Like his own splash damage would kill him. So as a spy, you look at their health and you determine whether or not you see him using the pistol. Soldier was very weak, didn't bother running up and stabbing him. There's a sniper coming out and uh, taking a shot at him and throws the PP. Oh no! If you get uh, if you get the PP and the poo poo, you're screwed. So, uh, we're gonna move on to the Gozizan segment. Gozizan submitted the most replays and had the least uh, usable ones. He's gonna be using the low DPS version, which is the uh, L'Etranger, which gives you longer cloak, does a lot less damage, and the Spicicle, which, uh, if you get caught on fire, you're Im immune to being lit on fire. You s like, you still take damage from fire, but you're just not lit. So it's kind of like, with the Dead Ringer, you kind of have like a two option getting out of fire. If like, if you use the Dead Ringer, you put yourself out of fire, you caught catch fire again wearing the spicicle the spicicle would disappear but you will not be on fire but the pyro can still hear he's burning you so if he's good as good at tracking it doesn't matter you still fucking die right but that's like i guess that's mid to high tier pyros can do that low tier pyros uh will not be able to do that but like you always got to keep in mind that it's a fair fight if the players you play is as good a pyro as you are as good a spy, right? That's when it's like fair. So he's just gonna be using the Letranger and uh, Letranger or Let or Letranger, whatever. And uh, he's gonna be going for some stabs here pretty soon. It's also a silent killer, but it makes like this <laughs> sound, and they turn into ice statues. That's also a sound to listen to. Uh, also, higher tier players will, like, 
Like you took like after the you have the eternal reward, which is like a silent killer, but it makes like this sound. And to me, the and a class going ah! means exactly the same. There's a spy behind you. It's a spy behind me, and I might die at any second if I don't turn around. Which is important. And you're grabbing, you know, the ammo, refilling your cloak. Oh, a sniper with the razor back! How will we ever deal with this one? Oh yeah, right, you just shoot him. Boosh, dead. Okay, run around. Oh, there's a soldier. He doesn't... Uh, medics in the... way. Uh, getting shot by Thompson. Just... Mm, just... Alright, um... Oh yeah, right, push the card! Yes, push the card. Yeah. Okay, moving on, moving on. Okay, there's a demo man. Okay. Goes his on, got this. He's moving up. He is ready to kill shit. Ah, oh, the engineer. Okay. Oh, that wasn't necessary, right? Just you don't have to fake your death. But maybe it was a plan, All right? So it's an engineer, and he's gonna zap, and then he's going to shoot. And yeah, I got the engineer. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna. A, li a little tip for spies: disguise as the class you just killed. Because there's a chance you will be disguised as the guy you killed, and you will have his name, and you won't have anybody else's name. That's kind of a giveaway. If you see your own name on another class, don't be like, "Hey, somebody has is playing the same class as me, has the same hats, and that's the same name." And then you turn around and you fucking die as a spy. Keep that in mind, man. Keep that in mind. And uh, immediately uncloaking, not having a lot of cloak. And oh yeah. This is uh, go up here and uh, grab more. Oh, yep. no. Pyro, pyro. Okay, I'm on fire. Okay. And using the spicicle. Not on fire. Uh, and we're good. And we're good. We're nailed it. Oh yeah, fuck. We forgot. We forgot that part. All right. So just avoiding. Come on. Avoiding the pyro. That's the sound. The sniper should have heard it. Razorback, boosh, you're dead. Doesn't really matter. Used a left hand chair to kill this engineer. Woo. So, uh, yeah, Razorback. Still pretty bad against spies. That's a very passive ability. Only works when you're working with your team, and if you don't work your team, you still die. But. Yeah. Um, and then goes on, just fucking burn to death. All right. So I had uh, one replay that I was gonna, I was gonna show the title of it, but I deleted it by accident because I kind of had like this. I, I delete replays very fast. If I like, if I see something in a replay that I've already seen, uh, we, if it's not like explaining or showcasing it better, I'll just delete it. Uh, but there was one from Gozes on that was. Uh, it was 8 minutes and 46 seconds long, I think, and he had 4 kills, I think. And he was like, is playing this passive good? And the answer was in all caps, NO! You should try and have at least 1 kill per minute. At least. If not, you're playing too passive and you might as well be playing something else. So, using a little dispenser trick. 6 kills, well... 6 kills in 8 minutes, that's like... Not a kill per minute, but you're playing a bit too passive then. So sapping stuff and the sniper and there's a ha and oh no, a Hulung heater, our only weakness. If only I just jump and stab you. Oh soldier, okay. Taking full damage. Dead ringer activated. You go. Yeah. He's going back, going back. Soldier and a medic, and nobody checks their backs, and this is nobody calls for spy either. Like if if somebody on your team uses the in-game command for spy, just just fucking look, okay? Just turn your around. It doesn't take that long, unless you play with like two meter sense. Like you 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 have to move your hand two meters in order to take a 360 because you heard low sensitivity was good, and you're like, I'm gonna have the lowest sensitivity ever. I'm gonna buy a desk. And only have one mouse pad on it that's like two square meters. And I'll play the game like this. I'm gonna do like a 360. So I'm hanging out in the corner. Ah, oh, engineer, double kill, yeah. 
That's a very nice pick. If you can get that engineer that's carrying something. And that's another spy. And it's like, oh, it's a sniper and some other shit. Oh, it's not a oh, no, medic. Oh, wait. Dead. So with that, we're gonna go to the last replay. It is three minutes long. And Gozizan gets a kill. So first he survives the sticky trap miraculously. To the demo man who is spawn camping. Ah ha ha! What is this? Let's get the. De oh, where did he go? Where did he go? He. Due to logic, deductioning, and reasoning, we have determined that he went this way, and we triggered the sticky trap again. Demo man's death and boosh! Yeah, and that's the only kill Gozizan's gonna get, and we have. It's been like 30 seconds, okay? So we gotta watch a lot of attempts that doesn't really go anywhere. Which happens as a spy, you know, this happens. It's important to not only highlight uh, when things go really your way and you just kill like half the enemy team. It's important to showcase the time where you nothing goes well. So, um, we're gonna be... S okay, turn on this so we can see where players are. There's like, oh, it's a medic. And it's... Oh, well, he went that way. Okay, okay. It's a pyro! Oh, stay away from the pyro! Alright, so our friend is battling the pyro. Okay, so we will just... Uh, there's a car. Yeah, there's a pyro again! <laughs> alright, alright, so... Okay, we're back here. And we, oh, this is a heavy end. I shoot... Uh, fuck it, okay. Uh, go around. Yeah, wait for my cloak to... Oh, my spicicle to recharge. And where are you gonna go? And this is, this is another spy. Is another, use the dead ringer. Okay, escape the other spy. Okay, use the dead ringer. And... Aha! We're gonna go and get the heavy. Uh, we're not. We're gonna get the medic. We're just gonna get the heavy. Get the. Mm, we have the medic healing us. We could just. Okay, get the medic! No, we're not gonna get the medic. He's healing us. Okay, get the. the uh, medics run faster than spot. Okay, get. The, oh, it's a pyro again! Damn it! Uh, mm, okay, uh, fall back. Okay, use the dead ring. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have to get behind him. We have to get behind him. Okay, uh, okay. We faked our death. That was pretty convincing, except not really, because now everybody's fucking looking for us. Okay, so we're gonna have to go and uh, decloak somewhere safe behind this heavy. Well, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Behind this heavy. All right, all right, right, right. We got, we got our knife back. Uh, we didn't probably lose it. Oh, our heavy's fucking dead. Shit. Okay, there's another heavy there coming. Uh, stair stab. Not today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. We'll do that stair stab tomorrow. Oh, okay, let's hang out. Okay, okay, and uncloak, and... Alright, okay, not get the medic, because he turned around, he fucking saw me. Okay, there's a pyro again! God damn it, alright! Right, okay, I'm, I'm still good, I'm still fine. Am I on fire? Am I on fire? Not on fire. We're good. We're good, we're fucking good. Alright. We don't have a knife anymore, so we have to wait a little bit more. And we're just gonna grab this, and uncloak, and make sure that we spend the money. If anything, if, if anything comes, I'll zap it. Okay, there's an engineer. Probably has some building. Right, we're gonna go on the roof then. Roof again. Okay, roof. Roof. Okay, so we're gonna stab something here. And there's a heavy on the. Okay, zap the, the fuck it. Okay. Uh, okay, we're, we're still on the roof. The heavy knows we're here. Okay, uh, behind here is good. All right. We'll really get the drop on this time. Aha! We're just gonna. Oh, fuck! And that's the episode! Woo! Ending it on the worst possible note, where like nothing you try works, you get spotted constantly, and when you get spotted constantly, the dead ringer is not that good. So hopefully you have gained a bit of uh, knowledge. If you're like new to this, if you know the dead ringer, you already know this. Why the fuck are you watching? And yeah, dead ringer is very much dependent on the enemy's behavior. If the enemy doesn't shoot you. But they kind of like, let's say they don't shoot you and they don't activate your cloak. And then the pyro just air blasts you to a corner and then he just burns you. Uh, that's the thing that can happen. It happens very rarely because everybody's like, I want kills, so let's just kill everything we see. Er. It's kind of like the thing, but um, Dead Ringer spies usually decloak around uh, ammo packs. So that's like if you think a player is Dead Ringing and you happen to know where the closest ammo pack is or dispensers, because sometimes we didn't see it here, but some spies that like to jump on top of a dispenser and just kind of hang out there because a dispenser, as well as carts, heals the enemy spy as well as refill their cloak faster. So if you're an engineer, sometimes just check if somebody's on top of your dispenser or on top of your sentry, uh, stuff like that. Don't repair a teleporter standing above it. Stand uh, like as far away as you can w w when reaching it, if the spy decides to go through. So that is the episode for now. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. Maybe you had a laugh or you cried because because you're like that. So with that, I'm going to mention what we're going to be doing. Uh, I think I will be doing a sh 
Like, I'm, I'm still working on my schedule because I've gotten really busy. I do a lot of dancing, and I'm actually going to be a dance taxi, which means I am gotten so good that I get to teach the noobs, or the newbies of dancing. So uh, I'll be doing that. So I, I like I, I, I dance a lot. I'm a bit more active. Studies have gotten a lot harder. They are a lot more requiring, so I don't have as much time as I used to because I'm on my last semester, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So I'm really working a lot there, so uh, schedules are changing a lot, so I'm trying to get this schedule going and also we're getting to the point where we've covered nearly every single item in the game pretty much uh, so I'm gonna try and figure out once we like reach the point where I'm satisfied with all the weapons we have uh, all the coverage uh, we might be changing the show towards something else like uh, maybe more competitive uh, already did one of those but uh, I'm not sure if uh, focusing on entire team's play is like worth it. It's better to do that. So we have a couple of future topics that I posted in the the Steam group, which all announcements and uh, scheduling starts. So instead of asking me when the show starts, just check if I if it's a scheduled in the group. You know, you can also go to highgps.no. It has like an Im embedded little Steam group. So if in case you can't be bothered using like going to the Steam group, just go to highgps.no, and it will let you know. Uh, all the announcements will be in the side, and I think the time will be in. Uh, it will be another time zone. We will see if I have planned something. At least the date will be correct. So uh, we have like there's a lot of stuff that was covered in the patch. Um, a lot of it was changed, but a lot of it kind of works the same way. So it's not necessarily uh, worth uh, going into. But uh, I think the one we will go into is uh, the power jack for the pyro because that's really interesting. So next topic for all you pyros out there, you're going to be playing with the power jack. You can use whatever loadout you want, you just have to use the power jack. That is all, like the melee weapon, like the big hammer that makes you run faster and get health and take more damage, I think. Uh, but that's going to be the topic for next time. It's going to be a pyro episode, so submit those replays if you want. I'll be playing with it as well uh, to get my opinion of it. Other than that, do as you please. Uh, I've been HiGPS. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.